Hello and welcome to Metal Gear Rex. Today I've got something really cool and uh, we're going to install it on the car. It's updated headlights. First major cosmetic uh, update that we're doing to the car. I don't know if you guys saw that. Let me turn the camera around. I might actually, oh, actually I can't do that while recording. So that's fine. Uh, I'll just turn this around so you can see. Uh, I got the VLANs. I want to say they're, they look a lot like the Subi Speed ones, uh, but they don't cost $2,000, which is very nice. I got these off Amazon for $580. I think they're actually on sale. I think they normally go for about $600, but uh, we're going to take this outside. We're going to get this installed. I'm actually going to open these up and take a look, see what's inside. Some of um, the things I was worried about is the Subi Speed one I know comes with the DRL harness, or actually I think you can buy the DRL harness. And it's like pretty plug and play. These are also supposed to be, but um, anytime you buy something off Amazon, considering it comes from overseas, there's a good chance that uh, the setup might require a little outside the box thinking, so to speak. So let's see what we got here. Oh, big styrofoam top. Have decent packaging. There we go. Okay, so we've got the oh, okay. So this is this is what I was worried about. I think this is actually the uh, the harness going into the steering steering harness. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I'll have to read all this to see make sure we got all the right stuff. Um, for the most part, it's plug and play. I think this is actually to tap into the. Um, the turn signal, and there is a separate section for the DRL harness. I think this is actually, I think this is the DRL harness. I'm not 100% sure. So let's take a look what we got here. That is, pull this out. So this is what we got. It's got the, um, the uh, two, LEDs for the high and the low, so you don't need uh, to replace those, which is nice. It actually comes with it. That's one of the reasons I picked this over some of the other ones. And sequential turn signal on the front. And then, of course, you've got like, you've got the, let me set this down here. You've got the um, LED C light, which is, I know that's like a, a big deal. And you know what? It looks really good. You know, so this is going to be really fun. To do, I'm looking forward to this. My main reason for doing this is not so much because like it looks cool, but I've got a lot of issues with um, ha uh, with just the halogens and how dim they are. I wear glasses and I'm already blind as a bat at night. So having brighter lights and wider lights for me, it's you know safety. It looks cool and I just it just makes it easier for me to see. So I'm gonna get the camera and everything set up outside and we'll get started. I'll go over how to remove the bumper and all the little details, and we'll get this installed. So, see you guys in a sec. So we're outside. I've got um, the basic tools that I need. The lights are still inside. So the things that we really need here is you need 10 mil. You need to have a flat head of some kind, something small. And then this one, uh, you just need like something pointy or some sort of Phillips thing for the, the pop clips on the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over the clips first that we need to remove that, you know, I've seen a couple of the videos, but like I haven't, I'm kind of just going on this, oh, I don't wanna say completely blind, but a little blind, because you know, there's a sense of adventure and uh, learning. So the basic things that you're looking for is you've got these pop clips. Uh, if you look at them, they actually just pop up uh, using, just you can use your uh, flathead, just stick it in there, pop it up and it'll pop right out. And then you've got these 10 millimeter bolts all across the top. So you've got a 10 mil here, you've got a pop clip here, 10 mil, pop clip, 10 mil, and it goes all the way around and uh, on this side as well. And I think there is another uh, headlight brace underneath here, but we'll see that once we take off the front bumper. Another type of uh, plug here, let me get my, see if you guys can see this. There's another one right here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's a little dark in here. But basically, you push in using something pointy, and it's, again, just a pop clip. Push it in, the middle section will pop out, and you can pull this out. And then underneath the car, there are a few pop clips. 
Um, I think, oh, right here. So we've got one back there. I think we've got these few. And they follow along the front of the car all the way to the other side. So what I'm gonna do is get the camera on the mount and I'll start removing the bumper and we'll talk through it. And uh, anything that's boring, we'll just fast forward. And then once we get the bumper off, and I've got I've got a little mat here to put the bumper on, um, we'll disconnect these lights down here. Or actually, I probably won't even because I don't really need that much space. We'll just place the bumper right here in front, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So I'm gonna get started, and you guys will see that here in a sec. All right, guys, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna start popping off a couple of things here. We'll start with the basic pop clips because those are easy to do. I need a, a special cloth here that I'll put to keep all of the clips and all of the bolts. It is easy to lose these things. I'll try to keep my ass to a minimum in front of the camera. Nobody wants to see that. That's not what you guys paid to see. So we got one, two, three pop clips in the front. And little one, one each, little one on the light. Okay. One, two, three. We need next we'll put oh, here we go. Strip slip. Little one on the side. There we go. Actually, that wasn't that bad. I guess I it was too dark. I wasn't pushing it in the right section. So this is what this one looks like. It's um, very small. Just push in the center right there. I don't know if you guys can see that properly. So push in the center right there, and it pops right up. One of those each behind in the fender wall here. So the last time I removed a bumper was um, when I had my G GTI, this damn radiator went out a bunch of times. Oh, I ended up running into a rock or something while I was driving to Missouri from Texas. And um, I guess a rock flew through my grill <laughs> or something. I don't know exactly what happened, right? All I know is my radiator, no, my radiator was fine. My intercooler and my compressor was busted and uh, I was in Missouri in the summer 100 degree weather with no air conditioning let me tell you that sucked that sucked big time so getting the top to pop first right and then actually pulling the clip out it's a uh, it's a bit of a chore Oh man, that's the other thing. Just be careful with the screwdriver in your fingers. The last thing you want to do is stab yourself. You know, like I just did. All right, I got my pop clip. And actually, you know what? Since we're doing a lot of movement, let's take care of this. Fun thing about having long hair is having long hair, but the thing that sucks about having long hair is having long hair. All right, so I got my pop clip. Let's pop this sucker out. Oh, 
There we go. All right, so that's everything. That's, that's all of the clips. That's every clip. Now all we have left is the 10 millimeter bolts. So we're going to pop those up. So we'll get those later. There's two on this side that are for the, um, the lights. We're not gonna do that right now. We're just taking off the bumper. All right, so what that did was that took off this top brace right here. And we're just gonna put this over here, y'all. We're gonna put this, we'll put it over here on the claw. And so here, I'll show you guys what I'm referring to here. So we took off the, there was a pop clip in the back there, but this is actually for the, um, for the light headlight so but for the the bumper we've had these plugs right here this was pop clips and bolts the ones on the bottom and that removed the top shroud and now that there is a couple of pop clips here i believe that are connected to the bumper i think that one i think that one there and i think that one over there so let's find out which one it is i'm grabbing my camera because that's how i can tell we're grabbing my phone, that's how I can tell where the camera is pointed properly. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't think we have to remove those. I do not think that those need to be removed. I think just the top, and this is the bar that came out after I removed. This is the bar that came out that's just sitting on top, and all of the pop clips and all of the bolts were actually bolted into this light here. So that came out. Right there, and I think now everything is removed, so I should be able to remove this. So removing this, it's got clips all along the lights. It's got clips all along the side. Um, everything I've seen is just they say pull with some conviction on the sides, and it should pop off and pull up against from here like that, and it should pop off there too. So let's see how bad the effort is. Not bad. And this is a trick that uh, I saw on Subi Speed. They actually left one of the 10 mils in the middle. Just so when you take off the other side, the bumper doesn't just fall to the floor. Especially if it's just you working by yourself. That's the last thing you want. Okay. Okay. Pull that forward. Pull that Pull that up. Actually, should be the front bumper. Yeah, there we go. Hanging there. Hanging out right there. So what we'll do? There's one clip in here for the um, see if I can unplug that. I guess it was just sitting inside. They just had it. Oh, I see. They had it hooked. That's smart. That's kind of smart. So, there it is. And a little random leaf came out. So, here you guys can see. That's all it took was those uh, few. And we popped that out. These were the, the connectors that they were sitting on. So we popped those out. Looks like we got some foam padding. It's supposed to be sitting like this. 
You manage the other side. Okay. Anyway, bumper bar, all that stuff. So there we go. That's out. So it does have this shroud that we'll have to take off, which is pretty easy. And then the headlight will come out. So also it looks like my <laughs> battery is running low. So let me get that charged real quick and uh, we'll come back and we'll get that. We'll uh, start working on getting the headlight removed. All right. So everything is here. I'm going to, I actually already marked on the, uh, the wall here, the beam angle. And so when we plug up the new headlights, we'll be able to see exactly what, um, like if we need to adjust it, the height or whatever. So there are a couple of, here, let me unplug this real quick. There's a couple of things here that we need to worry about. So, so this is what I was telling you earlier, is this is the housing that is holding the headlight in. So we've got two 10 mils here, a pop clip here. We've got two 10 mils here, two 10 mils here, and a pop clip, which I've already taken off. Um, th those five will take off the housing, and these three should remove the headlight itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one side done, and then we'll bring one of them, one of the new headlights out. We'll plug it in and uh, see if we if we can make it work. So this is the turn signal here. It looks like we'll be able to just splice. Well, actually, we probably don't even have to splice it. It just connects right into it. Basically, it's like an extension. So that should be that should be easy. So I'm gonna remove the headlight and get started. Let me put you back. So when I look at this right now, I can see, I can see that the one plug that goes into the car is here. Then we've got the, this is the accessory to go for the daylight running lights, the DRLs to go into the fuse box. And this, they gave a separate port to plug into the, um, the lights down below. So I'm going to leave this here for now. Here's the the DRL fuse cable that we need for later. And here are the two plugs that plug in down below, which you know what? This is actually pretty cool that um, this is very similar to the Subi speed lights where they give you a harness so you don't have to tap any of the cables. So this actually goes into this right here Okay, and that will go into here. Cool. And then off of the, you can see off of the, uh, the headlight itself, it has a separate cable that's gonna go into that splice that we put. Basically, it's just like a, a, they, a built, or like a properly built splice. So what this will do is this will actually just go into that splice uh, giving it power, giving the sequentials power. This is going to go into the main plug, which is already sitting right on the inside there. This red cable is going to plug into one of two sections on here, which then this is going to plug into the fuse box, giving our uh, DRLs power. So right now, not too worried about the DRL. I'm going to, how best do I want to do this? Plug these two. Maybe actually, you know, we'll test the DRL as well. So we need to figure out where in the fuse box the DRL goes. And this awesome little, <laughs> this nifty little, uh, I think it was this tiny, tiny little instruction manual. So let's see, does it say? 
page three. Insert accessory insert here. It looks like the blue plug on the very top. You guys can't see that. That's okay. I'll bring the camera over here in a second and we'll take a look. And then I'm gonna take the fuse box off. Oh, that's actually pretty easy. Number 15. Come on, I'll show you guys. Can I bring my flashlight out or did I forget it again? I did forget it. Come with me. That's right, I'm gonna do the back. So, this is where they want it to go. Number 15 up on the very top. So basically you'd plug in one side, run the cable underneath somewhere, I guess following along these cables, uh, plug it on this side, bring it back, plug it in here. I will have to figure out how. Looks like there's already cables going here. As you can see, there's a cable going behind the radiator or over the radiator maybe. Looks like this is the radiator brace. We'll figure that out. I'll try to run it along this um, to the best of my abilities. So, but right now we're just gonna plug it up so we can actually have lights. So let me show you guys what we're talking about here. So this is the, here's the, the big connector, which is gonna get connected to that. This yellow is what's giving the turn signal. So this is what they gave us, this little splice cable. And all we do is plug the um, turning light into that little yellow thing. And then this red cable is what's gonna get connected to the daylight running lights. So it seems very easy and straightforward. And we're gonna find out here in a few minutes exactly how easy and straightforward that is. So here's the DRL. I think that's gonna be the biggest hassle is trying to figure out how to run the DRL. Because I see where the other cable's going, but there's a, um, there's like a, I don't want to use the word shroud. There is a piece of metal that is in the way. And I don't understand how to deal with that. Okay, so, plug this in again. Number 15. this here DRL side is in that'll be for one side over here this will be for this side so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, we'll leave this right here I'll plug it right here do I have enough room for this I do so that's clipped DRL is clipped Oh boy, DRL is clipped, and that's not long enough. Let me extend this. You know, the best thing in life, or one of the best things, is when you are doing something like this and it works the first time. Let's see. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's it's actually fairly simple. So. Let's see, once I turn the lights on, we should have DRL, the sequential should work, and these lights should work as well. So, let's go see. Oh, I saw something. It works, fantastic. Um, let's check high and lows. Actually, I just realized I can take my phone with me and I can see what's happening on the camera without having to run back to the media. All right, so that works. Here's the key. 
you need a key for accessory. I didn't see, I, okay, so on the camera, I saw everything except the high beam. So, I don't know if accessory needs to be on for that. So I'll turn it off. I see the sea light turn on. I see the amber reflector turn on. I see the regular lights. I don't see. I don't see the high beam. What we don't have is the, I'm going to have to open the garage a little bit. Lights down below is working. And URL is working. Awesome. Good. Actually, that was really easy. So we'll pop it off. Okay, my question is going to be the high beams. That's what I'm worried about. I think the high beam does work. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this and see if it does work. Sit here. Because I want to confirm. to make these things so difficult. There we go. Okay. So I want to confirm the high beam works. Yeah. Okay. Cool. High beam is working. And that's actually good. That's all I wanted to know. Good. High beam is working. Fantastic. All right. Close the garage. Good. Now it's a matter of just like putting it back in, uh, putting it back in properly and tidying up all the cabling. That's going to be the fun part. So, well, we'll leave this. Yeah, actually, I do. I do want to get. Oh, I plug the camera back in. I'm going to finish up the left side. I'm going to plug it in again, and then we'll move on. Sorry, that's the right side. For you, that's the left side. For me, it's the right side. So we're going to button up the right side, and we'll move on from here. So this pops out. Now, the thing that everybody has been saying about these, and we'll see if I run into the same issue, is there is a fitment issue with them. Not so much like fitment issue, but just like they don't fit as cleanly as people want them to. So we will find out here shortly if that is the case. Or not. Just looking to see if there's any any cracks or anything. Looks like no. 
and everything is not cracked. That's a plus. I see. I see what was said about, about the. Uh, I do see. I do see that. So it's not a major issue. I think some alignment and um, we would know. So I'll show you guys here in a minute what we're talking about. Okay. You sit there. Let me get on the plugs. You on this side. Let me just bring this over with me. Bolts, 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 clips, clips, clips. That's going to be interesting. That is going to be interesting. Because I can see that this is fine, this clip is fine, this clip is not. And we're gonna have to angle it like that. Actually, it's not bad. Let me show you what was being referred to as the number one issue with this, which I see why oh, cable so here you can see the fitment is not perfect like it's once i get these these bolts in like it actually won't be so bad because it'll be sitting more like like here but there's some finessing that will be required um which honestly unless you're looking right at it it's not an issue right that's the thing you have to be staring at it for it to be a big issue, which to me, that's not that bad. But um, we'll have to see how the rest of it looks. Make sure everything else fits, right? Because it's not just those two bolts, it's, it's everything. So basically what I'm doing is I'm loosely getting things mocked up and then we'll adjust We'll adjust from there. Oh, this bumper bar. It keeps falling. Come on, bumper bar. What are you doing? Silly bumper bar. That's in these. I mean, I think I think it fits. I think it's fine. Again, it did require. A little bit of finesse, but I think it actually, we'll have to see what it looks like on the other side. Is it perfect? No. Is it going to get the job done? Yes, it will. 100% it will. I don't know why I just don't get my power tools. I 
don't want to tell you too much. There's no real reason to. Just a loose, like, <laughs> so that it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, that's all. That's all I need. You don't need to. Like with this many braces, it's not going anywhere. So don't tighten it too much. Why you should double check? I forgot the uh, DRL. It just still need to run properly. Which I will run from here. Good. Woo! That would've been a mistake. Would've been a pain in the ass to go back and undo. Well, I guess it would've been a pain, but I mean, who wants to redo, redo work? Okay, good. So we'll, we'll figure this out here in a little bit, where this is gonna go. I'm thinking it is gonna go underneath here. And underneath, I need to figure out where that other cable was going. Okay, well, we can figure that out. That's not a big deal. This is still connected. I've got the zip tie for that. Zip tie, zip tie that together. And no one will be the wiser. No one has to know. All right, that side's done. Let's make sure shit still works after you plug it up. Cool, plate still works. Okay, so all of a sudden I can actually see, and I'll show you guys this later. I can see the height. It's actually not that bad. We'll check afterwards when both are plugged up to make sure they're even. Alright. Well, we won't plug up the bumper until we have everything sorted out here. So that's done. That's done. That one is in. This is ready to go. Now we'll do the same on the other side. Very easy. Not hard at all. Uh, bump part keeps keep falling out. That's a pain. Get... Oh. Every time I move the camera, I unplug the uh, the charging cable. And um, oh, there's my butt. Okay, let me just plug one up. I'm gonna get this sitting here so I can run, figure out where to run some of these cables. All right, that's good. So now let's talk about the DRL. This is something we need to figure out because this has to go a very specific way. So under the air box, obviously. Under the air box. Where are they routing this other cable? They're routing it down here. Can I go over the air box? No. So what I'm trying to figure out is where to route the cable. 
because I see a cable going here, but I think it's actually just going in here. I don't want to get it. I don't want it to get caught on anything. So obviously, that's the main main concern here. I have to think. Use your brain. Let's see. I would imagine that pipe gets really hot, so I want it to go there. I wonder if I can bring the back somehow. Oh no, I can't do that because it needs to be in the front. Needs to be plugged up here. Actually, it has to go this way. So maybe under the radiator hose. this plastic shroud. Oh, you know what? Actually, if I can bring it under the air box through the plastic shroud, I can put it on the other side of this foam to keep the heat off of it. That's probably smart. Yeah, that's actually, yep, there we go. I'll show you guys where I'm putting this because that keeps it above the, that keeps it above the, yeah, and, this is going to be hard to see. I'll try to show you guys in a minute. What way to move this? Actually, you know what? Under here may not be the best way. I might actually need to remove the air box to do this. Just this top shroud. I might need to do that to figure out the best way to. My issue is the radiator fan is right there. Is on this side. Now on this side is the belt. I don't want the cable just dangling around. Now if I can put it under here, I can braid it underneath the front of this, in front of the, um, put it in front of this, there's foam back in here, and then follow it along this cable. I think that's doable, but I'm trying to understand how to do that without having to take everything off. And my issue is this shroud I think I'm going to have to take the shroud off. I don't, I don't actually like doing that. But it's pop clips, so no big deal. Let's do that. Before I get too crazy with the cabling over there, let me finish this. And I'll, I'll take this off and I'll show you where I ended up. Where I ended up putting, putting this cable. how to get again pop clips but they are a pain <sighs> rather they can be oh my goodness where's my pop clip super pop clipperator man if I didn't have this I mean it's not necessary but just find something plastic that can help you because metal can hurt as I have already found Now, I'm confused. I'm so confused right now. Is this... No. It's got a screwdriver portion on it, but I really don't think it screws to anything. I think it's just a pop clip. Okay. Oh, boy. Alright, so that's easy. That's easy to do. Two pop clips, that comes off. So here, I'm going to show you guys where I'm going to run this where I think I'm gonna run it, and I'm gonna test fit it here. So, this is where the air box duct was. What I wanna do is I wanna bring the light up here, under here, I think this is the best way to go. Because then it'll be under the air box, which is plastic, it'll be on the other side of this foam, which is not gonna get that hot, and away from the radiator piping. Nothing. I mean, look how tiny, <laughs> unrelated. Look how small this radiator is. It is so tiny. 
That is gonna have to go soon. I have to figure out how to do that. I've never done anything like that before. That will be a big project. But right now, I think that this is the perfect way because this can come back around. The second harness can plug up here. We'll tuck that cable in somewhere. We'll bring this cable. We'll follow this cable up here. Boom, just like that. It's clean and it'll be underneath there and it'll stay away from the radiator fan and it'll stay away from the belts, which is my main concern. So that does it for that. Plop you guys back. Yep. <clears throat> So that's that. Good. I'm happy with that. And having the airbox on top is going to keep it from moving. Right. One second. Second thing. my years of being alive. So everything is done. We're going to give it one more test, make sure everything runs. We'll uh, check the sequentials as well. Put everything back together. So, again, the trick here being place the bumper up, put a 10 mil in there, let it hang, and make sure everything is where it needs to be. So, what I will do my best. I will do my best. So, I plug this here, stick a 10 mil right here. All right, it is secure now. We will do I'm line everything up as best I can. So the bottom lining up is going to be the trick because there's a section down below that you got to make sure you align properly. Actually. this just to make sure oh man let me try to do my best to get this ready to go okay all the cable is on the inside of the bumper Kind of important. Keep the cabling on the inside of the bumper. Here, I'm actually going to get these lights out of the way. Before we get too far ahead, make sure. These are secure, you know, in case I ever have to 
go back or something happens. I mean, we'll we'll see. There's a section where, um, there we go, the, the lights actually sit. I'm just trying to make sure. <clears throat> we got that. So, on this side, this needs to be on the bottom. This needs to be. Oh no! Where does the camera fall? Ooh, that was close. That could have been bad. I'm not sure how that happened. Let me chat you guys back. This is definitely difficult. Let's see if I can. I'm trying to think of like what is the best way to clip stuff. Oh, I see. Okay, there we go. There we go. So not right here, there. Are we aligned? We are almost aligned. That goes in. So let me pop one of these guys in.
That's it. Oh, that's everything. This has been a long, this has been a surprisingly long video. I didn't think it was going to take this long. That is, so we'll just get new pop clips for the air box. But there we go. Now you guys know exactly what I know. So, uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it if you stuck around this uh, stuck around this long. I will edit this video to not be two hours, obviously, and I will just do a little bit of B-roll outside. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. lights are pretty damn bright and I've actually I wonder if they are the exact same height as the OEM because I did do that I did mark on a wall where the OEM lights were pointing and then I adjusted these to be the same I mean it is very bright now there is one spot that bothers me and that's like this weird cutoff that I don't know how to explain and um, you probably won't be able to see it that well on the camera but it's like right in front of me it's is a light that drops off and I, I don't know how to explain it let me see if I can find a place to shine it against a wall this is actually not even the best place to do this but let me see if there's a wall I can shine it up against here let's put it against this Huh. No, that's not good enough. Let's see if we can find a um, back. So this is a library. I may be able to find a wall in the back here that I can shine this against to uh, give you guys a good clear view. This might work. Yeah, actually this is this is good you can uh, let me see can you see it yeah so actually in the camera you can see it uh, it looks like a stepladder and I don't understand why it looks like a stepladder is one side need to be a little bit lower I'm really confused so like let me see if I can put my finger so you can see here it steps up and then here it steps up again. I don't really understand why it does. It seems to be really wide, but that step kind of bothers me. Um, I don't know why it has to be like that. When I shine the high, the high is fine, right? It goes away because it's it's not um it's not there. It's that. Why is it like that? And when I was adjusting them, I was obviously really close to a wall. And I mean, I saw it then too, but I, I don't understand why it's like that, why the beam pattern is like that. It's like one side should be flipped, but it's not. I'm really confused. So I may need to mess with it some more, um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually park it somewhere else and uh, see if you guys can get See if I can get you a couple of clips from the outside of the car. So we'll come over here. And uh, trying to see if there's somewhere I can do it. I think here should be good.
Let me get. I'm gonna get outside of the car so you guys can hopefully see. Now, it's really hard to see. Let me turn on just the parking lights. Yeah, there we go. That might help. That's, that's gonna be hard to see. 